Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Yellow Chair devotional. Today's name for God. Oh, we've talked about this one before when we talked about a Bible character named Hagar. Do you remember what that might be? She gave a special name to God, and that name was El Roy. El Roy, the God who sees. The God who sees me. The God who sees what I'm going through and cares and loves me and is here for me. God isn't just some distant God way up in heaven, oblivious, taking a nap, not caring about what's going on with you or with me. He is El Roy, the God who sees. So let's read this story together. We're going to be in Genesis 16. So grab your Bibles. Genesis, first book of the Bible, chapter 16, starting in verse 1. So our chapters are our big numbers, big number 16, and we're just going to read the entire chapter here together, verses 1 through 16. And let's set the scene up just briefly here. God has promised Abram that he is going to be the father of gr a great nation. He's going to have so many descendants. It's going to be like the stars in the sky. You can't even count them. But Abram's old. His wife Sarai is old and can't have kids. And so they decide to take things into their own hands. And Hagar kind of gets pulled along through this matter of trying to do it your way instead of God's way. So let's read this together. Press pause if you need a little bit more time. Otherwise, here we go. Genesis 16, 1. Sarai, Abram's wife, had no children. She had a slave girl from Egypt named Hagar. Sarai said to Abram, look, the Lord has not allowed me to have children. So marry my slave girl, and if she has a child, maybe I can have my own family through her. Abram did what Sarai said. This was after Abram had lived 10 years in Canaan, and Sarai gave Hagar to her husband, Abram. Hagar was her slave girl from Egypt. That kind of repeated itself. Verse 4. Abram married Hagar, and she became pregnant. And when Hagar learned she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress, Sarai, badly. Then Sarai said to Abram, this is your fault. I gave my slave girl to you, and when she became pregnant, she began to treat me badly. Let the Lord decide who is right, you or me. But Abram said to Sarai, you are Hagar's mistress. Do anything you want to her. Then Sarai was hard on Hagar, and Hagar ran away. So let's pause for a moment and think about this, right? So we don't know how old Hagar is, but imagine, I mean, she's originally from Egypt. She misses her family. We don't know how she ended up with Abram and Sarai. We don't know, was there, was she sold into slavery? Was there a war? Was she captured? We don't know where her family is. And then the next thing you know, Sarai marries her off to Abraham so that she can have kids. And Hagar doesn't really have any say in the matter, does she? She doesn't have a voice for this because she is the slave to Sarai. But then when she becomes pregnant, Hagar goes, well, you need to treat me better maybe, right? That's what would go through my head. We, I'm doing this because of what you wanted. You should be nicer. And it says that Hagar treated Sarai badly. So maybe she sassed off a bit. Maybe she didn't want to cook or clean or do the things that Sarai wanted her to do. Maybe she had morning sickness and was praying. We don't know the rest of the story. But we do know that Sarai then gets really mad about it. And Sarai starts getting really hard on Hagar so that Hagar runs away. So then in verse 7, we're going to pick up what happens here. It says, The angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a spring of water in the desert. The spring was by the road to shore. The angel said, Hagar, you are Sarai's slave girl. Where have you come from? Where are you going? Hagar answered, I am running from my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said, We need to go home to your mistress and obey her. The angel of the Lord also said, I will give you so many descendants they cannot be counted. The angel also said to her, you are now pregnant and you will have a son. You will name him Ishmael because the Lord has heard your cries. Ishmael will be like a wild donkey. He will be against everyone and everyone will be against him. He will attack all his brothers. The slave girl gave a name to the Lord who spoke to her. She said to him, you are 
Elroy, the god who sees me. This is because she said to herself, have I really seen God who sees me? So the well there was called Ber Lahai Roy. It was between Kadesh and Bered. Hagar gave birth to a son for Abram, and Abram named him Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar gave birth to Ishmael. So it's a really hard situation, isn't it? But the thing is, is no matter what our situation is like, God sees us. God sees us. And the Lord goes to Hagar. And it says that the angel of the Lord comforted her and gave her promises about what her son was going to be like that he was going to be great. He was going to be against everyone. He was going to be strong. And that makes Hagar go, oh, you see me, you care about me. She goes, have I really seen God who sees me? And in that moment, even though she was a slave, she was far away from home, she was in a really, really hard place. She had that comfort and assurance from God, didn't she? Let's read another chapter together. We're going to go to Psalms 121. Did you know that the story of Hagar is the only place where God is called Elroy? It's the only spot. It is a special place. It's a special name that Hagar created especially for God. And it, and it speaks to Hagar's heart. It speaks to the fact that no matter where, what trouble we find ourselves in, no matter what our situation is, oh, she was special. She was loved. She was seen. In Psalms 121, though, there is a psalm about how God sees you and me today. So how do we find Psalms? Well, it's usually around the middle of the Bible. So open our Bibles to the middle. We typically hit Psalms and we're going to flip forward to Psalm 121. 121. And this is a short Psalm about worship. And it's all about how God sees you and me. God sees you and me. So Psalms 121. Pause if you need a little more time. But Psalms 121 says, I look up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. He made heaven and earth. He will not let you be defeated. He who watches over you never sleeps. He who watches over Israel never rests or sleeps. The Lord watches over you. The Lord protects you as the shade protects you from the sun. The sun cannot hurt you during the day and the moon cannot hurt you at night. The Lord will watch over you from all dangers. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. How many times there did it talk about how God watches over you and me? He sees us. He watches. Let's count. I see one, two, three, four, five, six times, six times. It reminds us that God doesn't sleep. He's watching over you. He watches over you and protects you just like the, like a shade protects us from the sun. He protects and watches over us from danger. He will watch over your life. Everything you're doing, every little step of the way, he will watch over you as you come and go both now and forever. He is El Roy. He sees you. He watches over you because he loves you. He is your creator. He cares for you. He's going to be there for you no matter what. Whether you find yourself running away from some troubles like Hagar, whether you find yourself discouraged, maybe you find yourself filled with joy and celebrating an amazing day full of fun things, God sees. He cares. He feels what you feel. He knows what you're going through. And he watches over and sees. And he is there to listen and learn and just rain down his love on you through every single situation that you face. So let's say a prayer together and then I'll show you our matching cards. Dear God, we are thankful that you are El Roy. You are the God who sees us. You watch over us all the time. You see what we're going through. You know what we're struggling with. You know the ups, the downs, the good, the bad. We are thankful that you aren't some distant God who is just taking a nap or busy with other problems. You care about each of us. 
May we just give you our burdens, come to you with every little thing, build that relationship with you, and just dwell in the fact that you are our Elroy. We thank you for your love in your name. Amen. All right, so for our matching cards on our first one, we write Elroy. And then I wrote that he, it is Hebrew for the God who sees me. And what does that mean? We all desire to be seen and truly known, right? We want to be seen. And God is the God who sees and he cares. He watches out for us. And I include all of this in the video description below. Then on our other card, we write the English, right? We write that it is the God who sees. And then we pick a Bible verse from what we read. And I did the one where Hagar, she said to him, you are the God who sees me. Genesis 16, 13. So I just wrote these and then put it onto some construction paper because how do I know when I have a match? I've got the same pattern on the back, right? On my scrapbook paper. So that way I know when I've got my match, right? So enjoy making your matching game and thinking today about what the name Elroy teaches you about God, a God who sees you. And I will see you next time.